The world is crumbling into chaos. And as everyone just lies around waiting for it to happen, pretending nothing is going on. I may see dead people, but I also see a lot of idiots out in the world. Everyone just sits around waiting for something to be done. But there's a problem. But everyone just sits around and lies and waits. Nothing ever gets done. The idiots running the world, the idiots tearing it apart, will drive us into chaos. That's the way I see it. Give it time. You all see for yourself that history is about to be made. Hello, my friends. <laughs> hello, hello, hello! It is January 31st, 2015, or February 1st in some parts of the country, East Coast. It's Saturday, no, or Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday, Sunday, Sunday! And I don't give a shit about it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't really care much for sports, you know. It's one of those situations, you know, I'm out with a group of friends and we're all getting together to play a little football or basketball, you know, I'll be up for that. But as we're, you know, just sitting around, munching on food and watching a bunch of big-ass guys pound on each other, that's just uh, not very interesting to me. You know, I'm a bit of a science nerd. I'm a tech geek. I'm an egghead, you know. I prefer to, you know, grow a fish tank full of microscopic organisms. Which I kind of am doing, but that's not the purpose of this show. I know this is a little late in the game. But as you can see, the title of the episode is Bias Sons of Bitches. Slash special projects. I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about the um, racist dad incident in uh, in Minnesota going on right now. I know it's been a uh, rough little over almost two weeks since that happened. You know, it was on January nineteenth when the initial video posted. You know, my birthday. It's basically a uh, kind of a video, it's kind of like text messaging, except you send videos, and if you send it to individual people, it usually goes away about 10 seconds after you actually watch the whatever was sent to you. It's kind of a stupid thing, you know, I have a bunch of friends that use it, you know, I never really got the hang of it. Never really got the point behind it, but, you know, of course it could, it could sound like, you know, just kids sending messages to each other, but the problem was, it was these two twin boys who were using profound language like slut, fat ass bitch, nigger, basically insult this girl. Now... I can completely understand where this coming this father is coming from where he when he caught the messages I mean there are 
way too many kids that are killing themselves because of the public bullshit that's going on. The because of jackasses out in the world like these kids and our father. Now, of course, being a concerned father, not wanting his daughter to off herself because of stupid shit. You know, he contacts the school, he contacts the parents, you know, try to address the problem. You know, he goes to the police to get something done. If something gets done, he gets in touch with the boy's father, who go calls him a fag, nigger lover. It's basically using language as a dumbass 10 year old playing too much Call of Duty. That's, I'm just speaking the truth here, people. Now, for those of you who I haven't heard, because the other parts of this story haven't really gone as public, uh, I haven't seen it in as many sources as it probably should be. But the gel, the kid's father lost his job about two days after the video was posted. Thank God. And a few other things. The uh, boys were moved to another school completely out of the state due to threats they were receiving. You know? And uh, the father, here's the part that I found interesting, I don't know if it's true or not, but I've seen a few sources that say this, but the father has actually entered into rehab for what was it, alcohol and prescription drug addictions? Yeah, that sounds about right. I might be a little off with that, but... <laughs> Allegedly, the boys in the per father's family apologized to the first father, Brian, let's see, what was it, what was his name, I mean, Brad Knudsen, hopefully that's how you say it, I apologize if he happens to be listening, <laughs> if I slaughtered that, but apologize saying that Darren Perot you know, I was only saying that because he was heavily under the influence. Okay. Also, another thing I would like to say is that, uh, you know, this is the point where a parent should be proud whenever, if this ever comes up to them. Hopefully it doesn't, but there's too many jackasses out in the world to say it won't. You know, if you have a mixed race child, you know, Basically, the daughter, she actually, she didn't take it as seriously as her parents did, which is definitely a good sign. She's got a good head on her shoulders, you know, she just blew it off. Yeah, that's actually good, you know, if I, yeah, I have a little cousin who had, you know, she just turned eight years old, who is, um, half- She's uh, half Jamaican, actually. Beautiful little girl. And <laughs> she knows it. <laughs> now, honestly, you know, I love her with all my heart. She uh, is actually my favorite out of that, that particular relative's children. And she also knows that. She knows I played, kind of played favorites with her. But it means I can do it, get her to do funny funny stuff more than her own brothers can, so, <laughs> there's two ways to look at it, but, you know, a similar incident like this happened to my little cousin, and I was proud of her about how she responded, basically, you know, what happened was, you know, she was in kindergarten, I believe, and this little girl walks up to her while they're on the playground, you know, kids, ah! <laughs> oh, push, Tommy, push! That sounded wrong. Anyway, y'all kids out in the playground having a good time, 
you know, just move it around. You don't really know what the heck they're doing. They don't really know what the heck they're doing, but they're having a good time. You know, this little girl walks up to her. A little Hispanic girl. Walks up to her and said to, to my cousin that she was nothing but a filthy nigger. Now, like I said, my cousin is of mixed races. You know, she's not really dark. She's kind of, she kind of looks like she spent a lot of time tanning. You know, put in a camera flash, she looks a lot darker than she actually is. But, you know, no, she's just tan, not real dark, not real light. Same freaking skin tone as this little girl. And my cousin... Bless her heart. She's a little genius. Looked at her and said, "What are you talking about? We're the same color." I was like, "I was proud of her. I was proud of her." You know, she didn't take it too harshly. You know, she she honestly didn't get it. She didn't get why this girl was singing. You know, she wasn't getting crying about it. She was upset. She was like, like basically, she. <laughs> She had the same response of people who've had to work customer service jobs. Where, alright, I should probably rephrase that a little bit. Her response was something along the lines of having to deal with the customer who gets all hot and tempered because something's not working when it's a fucking easy ass fix. I've worked a uh, technical support department for an internet company. I will not say its name. I used to get that a lot. And unless it was a really old couple that usually... That usually re depended on their like, grandkids or kids to be their IT guys. You know, I usually got a little irritated by it, but the majority of the customers I deal, dealt with were older people. And, as you can probably imagine, summertime was actually less busy because, you know, all the kids weren't in school. But, well, you know, that's just how the world works. But honestly, where do these people get off? I don't give a fuck if you're drunk, on drugs. You know, I don't give a fuck. There is absolutely no excuse for this type of behavior. People, in fact, it's no excuse to harass people about being gay, about being tall, short, black, white, blue, purple. If you end up blue or purple, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you that there's a story behind it, but <laughs> you know that's just a general curiosity. If all of a sudden I started seeing a bunch of people looking like Smurfs and it's nowhere close to Halloween, I'm gonna ask a couple questions. <laughs> I'll be like the day after Halloween, and the they just had trouble getting the paint off. Had that happen with some fake blood. <laughs> it looked like I got freaking mauled. But still, this little girl that harassed my cousin, a little Hispanic girl, after a little bit, the school was able to find out that the little girl's father, this little girl's father, told her to say that. What the hell? Who in the hell, ha in the right mind, thinks they can get away with harassing a little kid? It's one thing, you know, if it's a big brother picking on their little sibling. It's a big sibling picking on their little sibling. Or a little sibling picking on the sibling. Or cousins picking on each other. Or something like that. You know, that's one thing. You know, that's family. That's allowed. <laughs> We're kind of allowed to harass each other. <laughs> but still... Why is it that people think they have the right to harass each other? 
Especially if they don't know who the other person they're targeting is. I used to get this shit in school. I was like, who the fuck are you? So, I hear people try to use the excuse that we have become a society of vultures. We just pick apart each other. Blah, blah, blah. You know, we harass each other, you know? You know, there's a big difference between playful harassment and being a fucking asshole. That's, oh my god. Honestly, if, in my opinion, you know, the way I see it, if someone of mixed races is able to bounce back, to just brush it off, realizing that it was just a stupid-ass comment from stupid-ass people, they, that's a good sign. They have a good head on their shoulders. You know, they put up defenses, you know, try to be good. They put up a necessary defenses to try to help themselves move along in the world. Now, that's a good sign. But, there's one thing I want to say. Every now and then, I hear the excuse that, the example that, let's say, making fun of blacks was okay in the 1800s. Or making fun of gays was only okay like, okay like 10 years ago. Case, I mean gay. You know, gays and lesbians. It was never fucking okay. It was never okay. You know what? I, in fact, I'm going to step up and say, you know, I've made some comments. You know, usually minor slips, but I realized what I was saying and I brushed, you know, picked up the message before it became a major situation. I have absolutely no problems with any race, color, sexual orientation, or gender. I have problems with the jackasses that come in all forms. You know, I used to live in a, um, used to call, everybody calls it a labor camp because it was a it was a, used to be a minority housing area. Got a bunch of these jackasses. You know, it was a majority of Mac Hispanic people, you know. There was a lot of shit that happened. And after I finally moved out of that area, you know, shit got worse. There was drive-by shootings. There was drugs. While we were there, some 40 fucking years... Your old bastard tried to break into my house to rape my little sister. It's like, I am going to shoot this motherfucker. I don't give a fuck who, what race, color you are. If you're a fucking jackass and I see you doing, pulling that shit, I don't give a fuck what color you are. You're an asshole and you're lucky I don't put a fucking bullet into your spine. That'd be an interesting now, Uncle. Bow, whoa, whoa, what's your emergency? Yeah, I just caught these guys breaking into my house. They had weapon. They had weapons. I uh, I have them on the ground. You need to get somebody here ASAP. Okay. Uh, can you give me a description? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I gotta get ran off a description. Now that would be the smart thing to do in case one of them got away. Like, oh, you're worried about one of them getting away? Hold on. I'm gonna put that on the floor. Hold on. I put a bullet in your fucking spine. Make it so you can't fucking walk. You know, I hear all these people trying to say, you know, blacks get harassed the most by cops. How about instead of harassing cops, especially ones that are good people, because there are good cops out there, and there are piece of shit cops out there. I'll give you that. But rather than fucking burning down places and only causing more problems, why don't we Here's a, a wonderful little idea. How about we make it so where we don't need cops? Oh, such a sucking idea, I know. 
How about we fucking be nice to each other? Don't try to steal each other from each other. Don't try to kill each other. The addicts just be simple people and not need for cops. How about that? You know? Think about that. Isn't that such a wonderful idea? Oh, I, I know. It's such a weird concept. But well, why not we push to make it to where we don't need cops? I'm sorry for the law enforcement out there. But that's the truth. The way I see it, we need to start working to improve ourselves, otherwise we're only going to end up biting our own ass in the end. i said this once before, I'll probably say it several times more. Now, on to the second part of the program, the special projects. Now, I just wanted to... Can I graze over a few projects I'm working on to get the word out about what I'm doing? I have four major projects being in in development as we speak. Number one, the second book for my series, The Ones Who Walk All Worlds. It's going to be titled Lovers Cry. It's going to be taking place in. It's going to be. Retelling. So Why am I telling you this? Buy my book. Number two. I am also working on a s online store to where it's basically going to be an online store to where people can gather supplies for research hobbies, so to speak. You know, no matter how you look at ghost hunting, it's still a hobby, and it's still a form of research. You know, for people that like to, you know, grow fit weird things in their fish tanks, you know, it's going to be sort of stuff like that. People that like to go out, you know, explore the world, learn more about what's going on around them. It's going to be a store oriented like that. Third major announcement. The PRF anniversary is coming up. It's not coming up for a couple of months, but uh, the projects two through four are going to be tied into it, so that way, you know, we can make something special, you know, it's been four years since my very first ghost hunt, and oh my god, I need to fucking get back out in the field, but that's an, uh, another discussion. April 22nd. I will be hosting another free Kindle giveaway. Every single one of my books that's available on Kindle will be free for one day. It should be free in all countries that offer Amazon Kindle. If not, let me know. I will see what I can do to find out why it's not happening. But. Another Kindle giveaway is coming up, so save the date. I will be sending out a Facebook notification here soon. I uh, would say Google+, Plus, but for some reason that's been kind of restricting me and it's kind of pissing me off. Okay, what was that? What's number three? Number four. Some of you may have received an email from a group called CBUS Paranormal who is working on a paranormal directory. Yeah, I personally contribute to this. If y'all hearing this, you know, good luck on that book. I know how rough it can be to get projects out there. But this kind of gave me an idea for a similar project. It's going to be like a directory. But instead, it's actually going to be a bit of a research tool for clients. Let me explain a little bit. we got about four minutes left in the program. There's also a little song I want to play us out to, so. Okay, the, what it is, in short, this will give clients an air opportunity to look at a lot of information about local paranormal teams. I'm preparing the email that will explain all the details for it here soon, but basically this will be an opportunity to give yourself some free advertising, which is always nice. And this will also be an opportunity for clients to speak out about the assholes or fakes in the paranormal community that are using our name to rob them in 
or commit crimes against them. There'll be more details about that in the Facebook notification events that I mentioned earlier. But I don't want to go more into that because it's still kind of in the infancy stages right now. Uh, right, now it's getting towards the end of the program. I would love, thank you for listening in. I hope you enjoy, y'all enjoy Super Bowl. If y'all are into that, I hope y'all have a nice time. Feel free to see us next time. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, Google, YouTube. The, all the links to our project pages should be in the description below or next to or wherever the hell you might be listening to this episode. Now to play us out, I have a song. It's called Dive by a group called Baby Bird. Interesting little group. They're going to play us out for tonight. I hope I'll see you all next time. Happy hunting for all paranormal investigators out there and I hope to see you soon. The days are passing by Just waiting for the time to fly Now a moment full of life Is waiting you tonight